Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and Elden Ring. This is the arcane tier list video for patch 1.07. We've been through the other weapon types for strength, dex, faith, and of course, intelligence. And now for the final type, arcane. We're updating our list with the changes in 1.07, as well as 0.6 and 0.4. With that, this is the list. You may note compared to the other list, there's actually a D category because even though this is the best arcane weapons, there aren't that many of them, and in fact, some of them just aren't that good. So with that said, let's just begin the video, and we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. Beginning with Vare's Bouquet. This fun but meme weapon is sadly no more effective than last time that we talked about it. With no relevant changes in all the various patches, it's still a tiny little hammer, right? So tiny range, small damage, way less posture damage than you'd hope, and it also has a rapier-style Ash of War on it, surprisingly, called Blood Tax, where you strike many times, building up the blood loss quickly. The problem is that it's a small hammer, right? So it's got no range compared to a rapier or a longer thrusting weapon. So it's hard to even land that and get it off effectively. And that's essentially your best way to deal damage with this weapon. So it's still not good even if you can buff it up, even though it's a bleed weapon already. And I find it funny how it's basically seen no love in all the patches so far. Feels like a very forgotten weapon. Also in the D category though, is the Ripple Blade. The literal only arcane scaling axe without having to change its original affinity to make it that comes with very few positives, unfortunately. You can apply multiple buffs that scale off of Arcane and maximize the effectiveness of this weapon, but even then it's just not that strong because you could genuinely just take, say, another axe and then apply affinity that scales with Arcane with whatever status you want to work with, and that will work a lot better. Not to mention this weapon type, you know, you've got a small range, not massive hits, again, not massive posture damage. It's weak overall. As cool as the design of this weapon actually is. Lastly for detail though, we have the Clinging Bone Fist, which has actually seen improvements, yay. Now it's an interesting weapon, not just in the design that you're hitting people with a little bone arm, but that it's also the longest ranged fist weapon in the game, which is interesting considering that whole weapon type has tiny range in general. It comes with its own Ash of War, which you can apply to other weapons in the same way. Lifesteal Fist was buffed in 1.07. With better motion speed and attack power, it's actually more effective in both PvP and PvE. You see, specifically in PvP, it had its attack range improved further to make sure it actually is more relevant in that content. It also gave it better recovery in general. However, despite that, the weapon remains a poor pick. You know, its output, based on the numbers it has, it's just low. There's actually better fist weapons to pick between, and you can still apply that ash to it, which may still see those benefits. This weapon certainly improved with the ash being improved, but there's still so many enemies that this ash of war, the grab, it just won't work. So we can't really rate it higher than a D. What we can rate higher than a D, though, is the only C-grade weapon. This is the Serpent Bow. Much like the new Dex tier list I did recently, I had a shield part of that. Well, our Arcane list has a bow. As a unique Arcane scaling weapon by default, it has to be acknowledged on this list, and I'd rate it the same as before, which is a C grade. But only barely. It's a cool design and effective at applying poison from a distance. That's the whole gimmick and concept of this weapon. However, if you were to take another good bow of similar style, like say Pulley Bow, you'll have higher damage numbers and can still apply status by using specific arrows. Or you could use a faster application method like the pulley crossbow using poison bolts. So by using either of these options, you'll deal more damage, you'll apply more than just poison, but all the different statuses you might want to, and so you'll be a lot less limited. Still, the serpent bow is a unique and cool weapon, especially in that design, but it's only really effective at one task, and that's applying poison. At least it's effective at something, which is more than we can say for the D tier weapons here. All right, let's get interesting now as we move up into the B tier with the Ripple Crescent Halberd. The highest natural AR arcane weapon that we can buff up in various ways means it's not a bad pick at all. This leads to very effective status buildup and application, and a great pick for that would be Sleep. You can commit full to arcane to maximize how effective this weapon, then whatever status grease you've applied, that status will build up really quick because you have high arcane. I see this run in PvP, while rarely, occasionally to great effect. That build attempts to land even just a couple hits to put someone to sleep, which will then hold them in place. Then while stunned, you can use a very effective Ash of War or multiple hit combo to burst them. Or you could not worry about something like sleep and just do meta and simple. Use bleed and then just go to town with your tons of bleed procs. You know, relatively it's better than it used to be because Seppuku's been nerfed, which was previously the king. As that's made weaker and also more expensive to run, this by comparison 
is better. So it has to be acknowledged as a strong weapon with good potential and with a variety of status options you can run with it. On the other hand, we have another weapon here that's just a bit outclassed by what you could compare it to. The regalia of Eocade here is the Dancing Blade Straight Sword. As a straight sword, it works well in power stance with effective use and yeah, you can get good damage with that. But it all ties to the Ash of War that makes this weapon special, right? You send the Dancing Blade forward and corkscrew spin it on a target from medium to close range, burning health away, which is very effective when you have successive hits in your build. A very cool and effective way to deal damage at medium range when you use the right build. Certainly viable in PvE. But as I said, it's completely outclassed by the bigger, more effective weapon that was directly improved in previous patches compared to this one. Having said that, the Ash of War Eocade's Dancing Blade was improved in 1.07 tab better recovery from that, but it's not that relevant. A bit more relevant by comparison is the Reduvia dagger here, which compared to the previous tier list has gone up a grade. A bit of a fan favorite weapon due to how effective it is, especially in power stance with another dagger or another Reduvia. It's a cool weapon. The moveset though has tiny range, much like any dagger, but good output because it's a fast hitting bleed build up weapon. Where it truly shines is the Ash of War though, the Blood Blade, which sort of sends out this wave of blood, dealing nice damage and good bleed status build up from range. The Ash was buffed to have higher attack power, which is relevant in PvE, and damage detection on the weapon part itself. So a point blank blood blade will hit them with the bleed attack itself, but also the dagger at the same time. So it has had its damage increased in that way. You can fling that projectile over and over though, spamming the ash and doing this long combination of ranged blood buildup. And that really only works better now in this current patch. So I feel it's in a solid place now, but it still suffers from the terrible dagger range and difficulty that it's going to have with heavier opponents who aren't going to flinch when hit by a small little dagger. So a high B grade, that seems fair to me. Moving up though, we have the A tier picks, starting with Morgoth's Cursed Blade. As a curved greatsword, it had a nice moveset and good range, and its bleed potential was solid enough, but it didn't have the fast hits to make that actually occur constantly. The Ash of War, Cursed Blood Slice, was the biggest offender by comparison though, forcing you to dash forward slowly, then strike slowly, and then a Cursed Blood Explosion would follow that strike. However, in 1.04, a bit ago now, it was hugely improved by speeding up how quick it all happened. Now you dash forward much quicker, you do the strike faster, the explosion comes out faster, and then you can do that follow-up hit to do it all again. There's the fire damage of the cursed blood, and then way more bleed buildup. The explosion has nice radius around it, so trading with that in PvP is very effective, especially with a fast gap closer of the dash forward. In PvE, well, the boss or whatever you're fighting is not going to actively try to avoid these things, so you can just spam the Ash of War, stagger bosses, burst them down with bleed, and it's even better if they're weak to fire. Also though, in 1.06, the previous patch, the moveset of two-handed curved greatswords, that was improved. So strong and charge attacks are actually faster on this as well, leading to better base gameplay with the normal moveset. Therefore, I think this weapon is in a really solid, respectable place. While not necessarily broken, it is very good, and I think that's why it deserves an A grade. Also very good then, is the Bloody Hellis. You might see a bit of a theme as we go into A grade and above with Bleed. Now in this case, we have a heavier rapier style weapon, all about thrust attacks at impressive range and heavy hits with that. And it comes with this unique Ash of War, the Dynas Finesse. It's really cool, it's this evasive backstep, which can then be followed up by choice with a strong attack to dash back forward and sort of destroy the target that's where you dash back from. That's deadly in all content, against bosses or in the open world, because it's easy to land and very effective thanks to the weight behind the hits. In PvP, it's shockingly strong due to the dodge working as this fantastic evade and then that huge punish of a strong follow-up if they try to trade. The issue with that though is that it's clear what's coming if you see it coming, right? It's easy to evade and hopefully punish the person doing it. But you don't have to use the follow-up immediately. You could combo that jump backwards multiple times or turn away from your target and dash backwards towards them to suddenly target them and dash forward with the actual heavy follow-up. There's a lot of mind games with this weapon. Alongside the bleed buildup that of course occurs every time you land a hit, it's a threat. The Ash was even improved in 1.07 slightly to give you better control over the strong attack follow-up, meaning it's going to be harder to roll around in PvP and you'll actually need to time your roll to avoid it. That'll raise its threat even more, but I still don't think its output is worthy of an S grade, but A grade, definitely. Last up though, for A grade, it's time to talk about Eleonora's Paul Blade, the Cursed Blood Twin Blade, which is an incredibly cool weapon with a flashy charged heavy attack that it comes with 
and that potent, yet maybe overly mobile, Ash of War, the Bloodblade Dance. In 1.07, that Ash had a minor improvement, its damage detection, something that you could maybe have issue with due to the fact that it forces you to leap forward and back during its rather long animation. As a cursed blood weapon though, you've got bleed and fire damage potential, both of which are extremely effective against those that are weak to that. In PvP, it's either fantastic or awful, due to the way the Ash forces you forward and complete that lengthy combo and then jump back. That basically only really works if someone's foolish enough to try to trade with it, where it's going to be very strong and burst them down. But we have to acknowledge its weaker side and awkward nature, in that if someone doesn't try to trade with you, they know what's coming, it's going to be really hard to land it. If they were to buff it in the future to make it so you could roll out of that really long combo, I think that would largely resolve the issue. Many weapons have got exactly that, a roll out cancel. In any case, the output of this weapon is high, and it's a very cool and fun weapon at that. It has its weaknesses though, so A grade once again makes sense. But last but not least, we have the S tier grade. Starting with Mogwin's Sacred Spear, this great spear has a solid, reliable moveset, which can buff itself up with the Cursed Blood to deal fire damage and bleed as always. The key to this weapon being S grade though is the Ash of War Blood Boon Ritual, which is a huge AoE, massive burst of bleed that you can spike three times and do the whole nihil animation of the boss. That's extremely effective in PvE, in open world, in AoE, in PvP, it's a very good weapon. The running heavy attack is insane. Great Spears in general, I think are doing great this patch. So I think this weapon remains an S tier, obviously, despite the fact that it was technically nerfed in this patch, where they reduced the actual range of that AoE of the Ash, but it's only minor. It's still really good range and really effective. Another weapon I'm happy to put into S grade though is Mariah's Executioner Sword. As I mentioned earlier, the straight sword version of this, totally outclassed by another weapon, this is the great sword. This is the better version. This is the one that does way more damage and is way more effective and actually viable in PvP. Originally, it was also a really disappointing weapon, but it has been improved in various patches. For example, in 1.04, the all-important travel distance of the Ash of War, the range at which it goes, that was massively improved. And as I mentioned before, they added a roll cancel to this one. So if you miss it, you're not stuck in the animation. You can roll out and cancel it early. Just that alone was absolutely massive for the potential of this weapon. But amazingly, great swords in two hands were further buffed with their moveset. And also, yeah, the Ash of War has had its recovery improved as well. So you actually get out of that long animation even quicker. Steadily, this weapon has become a powerhouse and is one of the highest burst potential weapons based on its Ash of War in the game, all thanks to successive hit builds, meaning you will chew through health bars with one Ash of War. And if you can follow it up with a second one quickly while the successive hits are procced, it'll even hurt harder. Definitely S tier in PvE. Finally, we only have one more weapon for our list. The last S tier weapon is obviously Rivers of Blood, which has been specifically nerfed and changed and buffed multiple times throughout various patches since last time. And yeah, it's still S tier. So the main nerf came in 1.06, forcing it to deal less damage overall and building up less bleed on its hits on the Ash. Now, if you were to hit with the weapon and the Ash at the same time, that would do stupid damage. So they also reduce the weapon damage during the Ash of War as well. With all of that, it went from what I would consider the best weapon in the game to one of the best weapons in the game. Still really effective. And yeah, they buffed it. In 1.07, they slightly improved its attack power in PvE. I think this is because of the specific PvP balancing they're starting to do. They nerfed every Ash in PvP, so by improving its damage, they kind of kept it where it was. But that means in PvE, it was just made stronger. Through our testing, we found that you can still get the bleed proc and kill someone in one or one and a half Ashes anyway, but it's certainly not what it was, where you would hit like half of it and then they would just die. Still, it's a top tier weapon weapon, obviously, and still really cool. But there you have it. That is our complete arcane weapon tier list for 1.07. And I've just reordered them. So left to right, left being best, right being weakest in its individual tier. As always, if there's a weapon that I have not included that you think should be in the list, or if you balance this and order it slightly different, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy these tier list videos, let me know with a like so I can keep doing them. We have plenty of other topics we want to talk about with the patch and with all the changes, but those are the weapon types and my opinion on all of them so far. For now then, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.